All right, everybody, we're going to get started. And man, we're going <laughs> to, I'm telling you now, like I'm already laughing and you know why I'm laughing. <laughs> then we're going to close the show with something tonight that I. <laughs> it's not even funny. <laughs> I don't want to. Uh, I don't even I, like, I'd rather not deal with this, but this is how we're going to close. We're going to close the show with it. So. <laughs> Oh, Jeff man. found it and sent it to me earlier, <laughs> and I was uh, appalled by it. But now, uh, now we're going to close the show with it. So That's stay tuned. It's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, you're going to. Right, let's just let's just get to it. Let's, let's right. jump in here and get this go. sucker going. All right. <laughs> here we are. You get the horn show, Tad and Jeff. Welcome to the big show, everybody. It's called that for a reason. Even though tonight we're going to try to keep it small. Uh, it never seems to work our best, our best laid plans. Uh, yeah. so let's, let's, uh, let's start off here. How you doing tonight, brother? I yeah, mean, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm excited, uh, for all these stories we have tonight. Um, got some good ones. We got some really good ones. I, I love coming up with these stories, man. When you send the stuff to me, I'm like, man, it's so brilliant. You know, it's just such good stuff. Well, I'm telling you now, if somebody out there. And whoever you are, you know who you are. But if somebody out there you know. a, a, attempts to listen to the show and claim to, that they are not entertained by it, uh, I'm not going to tell you what you should do, but I will tell you that there are lots of people in your life that would probably enjoy it more if you weren't around. Like, <laughs> I'm not saying what you need to do. I'm saying move to Canada. Like, you know, yeah. you could travel. Yeah. Just stay away from people. You shouldn't. You're not a people person. Definitely. This show is pretty daggone entertaining. We do our very best to keep you entertained, and we're not going to waste any time tonight. We're going to jump right into it. I found this clip the other day, and now again, I'm going to say this ahead of time. Sometimes I say this stuff at the end of an episode. I'm going to say this in the beginning of an episode. If you're listening to us on the podcast, we have lots of things that we're going to talk about on the on the show. Every episode's different. Some of them are video clips. We talk you through what you're going to see on video. However, I would highly recommend later that you go check out our YouTube channel to see the video of the, the thing that we're talking about because it's worth a look. So we will talk you through. Trust me that it will lose something in the translation versus, uh, versus actually being able to watch it. But uh, just know that. So if you're listening on the podcast... Continue to listen to it. It's fine. Later, you can check it out. And we have lots of yeah. shorts and things on YouTube, uh, tons of content there. So you'll be able to check it out. Or if you have one of those devices they sell on TikTok where you can watch Netflix while driving and YouTube, maybe just pull it up. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you to drive. Right. But I'm just That's saying the option's there. Yes. Yeah, the option's there. You're yeah. an adult. Yeah. This isn't professional advice or even no. amateur advice. <laughs> But it's it's a thing you could do. Live sure. your own life, man. Live I can your tell own you life. what to do. Yeah, you, know, you can do a lot of things. You know, you can smoke yeah. meth. You can do a lot. Of, I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just saying, you can do no. it. You have the freedom to do it. I mean, come on, man. For the love of God, you're out of the nest. Spread your wings a little bit. It's your own Spread life. Them. Just go That's live it. it, man. Get yeah. busy living. Get busy dying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With that having been said and that uh, advice from Red being spread, now <laughs> I'm going to share this video. Sometimes people try to do funny things uh, for likes, clicks, subscribers on YouTube or you know any other social media platform. Don't do this. In this one, uh, you will see there's a gentleman sitting in a barrel and another man on the outside. The barrel is filled with water, but they put something on the surface of the water. I'm not sure if it's rubbing alcohol, gasoline, kerosene, whatever it is. Let's see what happens. And I'm going to make sure it's muted. They light the water on fire. The man is under the water. Look Picture like this. a cold plunge in a barrel. Now I... the surface of the water is very tall flame, and the guy pops up out of the water. <laughs> Just like a scene from, like... <laughs> Friday the 13th, <laughs> Jason comes up out of the water. And the thing that's great about this is, so the guy thinks that coming up out of the water 
the water is going to put the fire out. But instead, sure. the fuel that they put on top coats the man. So he's then on fire. And it's not actually burning his skin, right? We see people, walk, except it might be burning his hair because <laughs> the rest of him goes out, but his head stays on fire. <laughs> and he just, no matter how many times he ducks under, he can't get the fire to go out. I'm pretty sure this was a uh, Americans, uh, America's Got Talent audition tape. <laughs> uh, so hopefully the, you'll see them on the show yeah. real soon. Hopefully, hopefully. Uh, they might not be with this trick. <laughs> I mean, this is pretty bad. I love the fact that he's just dodging up and down, like just jumping up and down. Hey, I'm dunking myself. This isn't working. Right. And then the guy really was just trying to like pat it. Yeah, like, just pat his head down. Like, yeah, like, and he's laughing the whole time. Yeah, like, this is great. <laughs> Your head's on fire. Yeah. I tricked you. <laughs> yeah. So, look. We we want subscribers too. We want viewers, but I can tell you, fire will play a limited role in our show. That's the the commitment yeah. that you're going to get from us. I won't, you won't say get it no from, role. No, I won't say no role at all. It's yeah. going to play a role. It'll, it's going to be a form. minimal role. <laughs> it's going to be a controlled role. Any burn here will be a controlled burn. Yeah, yeah. We will, we'll manage it. We'll manage it. Uh, yeah, insane. Uh, okay, so I'm going to shift totally shift directions here. I'm going to show you this. You may have seen this. People may have seen this out here, but this is something new that I, I wanted to share. White Claw. Everybody knows White Claw now. The White sure. Claw is a seltzer, right? An alcoholic seltzer. Very popular. They were kind of like one of the first big names to come out with this alcoholic seltzer and became very popular. Well, now... White Claw has come out with new White Claw 0% alcohol seltzer. Okay, so this is just seltzer water. Then. Just seltzer Flavored water. seltzer water. Yes. So the cool. whole thing that made White Claw interesting was that it was the first alcoholic <laughs> seltzer. Now they've Anyone gotten rid of the alcohol. Who was buying this? Like, just go down the aisle and get yourself a, a, a 99 cent bottle of flavored seltzer water because that's what you're drinking. Yes. For eighteen ninety nine. And the other thing is you don't look that cool carrying a can of White Claw that you're like, I got to, I just got to like, I, wow. I, I got to look cool even though it's non-alcoholic. I got to make sure yeah. everyone sees that yeah. I have my White Claw with me. It's like, dude, you don't look cool carrying a White Claw no matter what happens. You definitely don't need to pay just for seltzer water. I, will, I don't understand. I, yeah, we. I'm going to do a little deeper dive on that. I have to know what the sales on these are. Like, who is buying this? This is seltzer water. This yeah. is flavored seltzer water. Yeah. Unless who, they're selling it for the like... Market? Right. Unless you're selling it for like 6 or $8, maybe at that point I can be like, oh, all right, well, that might be right. worth it. <laughs> but I'm assuming it's going to go for the same price, maybe even more than what the regular white calls go for. Well, here's what I can tell you. Take this for whatever it's worth. But I did a quick Google search and white claw regular seltzer. I could buy a case from Walmart right now for $16 and 48 cents. Right. I can get white claw 0% alcohol on Instacart for $19 and 59 cents. Now, I understand Instacart has fees, but that's $3 more than I can buy the alcoholic White Claw from Walmart. Yeah. You yeah. just love the taste of White Claw so much, but you just don't want the 2% alcohol that's in it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm I, I'm all about purifying myself. I, my White Claw has to be very pure. I mean... So here's the thing that's really great, too, is that I'm reading, like, this is the, uh, I have the press release for when they came out with this. And everyone's very excited about uh, White Claw at 0%. And they say that, like, they've spent all this time on research and development. I'm not lying to you. The quote here from White Claw justifying White Claw 0% alcohol is, after years of research and breakthroughs, including development of our proprietary plant-based sweetener technology... White Claw has found a unique way to make beverages that have all the taste and complexity you expect in an alcoholic beverage made non-alcoholic from the start. So it's not a lesser version of anything. It's more. Here's the problem. 
As a general rule, the issue is that things taste worse when you add alcohol to them. That's why it's so difficult to find a good canned cocktail or canned seltzer. It's because sure. it's easy to just make good tasting fruit juice or something. That's not hard. It's hard to get it to taste really good when you mix alcohol in it. They're touting the fact that they have finally figured out how to make good tasting seltzer water. They don't need alcohol in it anymore. Yeah, we flipped the script. <laughs> <laughs> finally, we can it's get rid of the alcohol. It's taken us years to figure out not to put alcohol in it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not lying to you. I want to read you a little bit more of this press release from White Claw. As a leading edge beverage company with a culture of innovation... White Claw Seltzer Works spent decades researching how taste and alcohol work together. Our investment resulted in patents and proprietary beverage technologies. Our new-to-the-world approach led us to develop our own iconic flavors found in no other drinks. As a result, White Claw Hard Seltzer pioneered the most significant new alcohol category since Prohibition. The craft and science that went into White Claw Hard Seltzer led us to create White Claw 0% alcohol, a fundamentally new kind of drink for every kind of adult drinker that could only come from White Claw. They spent decades <laughs> of research, is what White Claw says. Sure. Now, here's the problem. When you look up, when was White Claw released... I promise you, it wasn't decades ago because White Claw came out in 2016. So, how did eight they years, spend they decades? Were close. Yeah. So you spent the early 2000s just in R and D. Like you, yeah. you had you were just like, man, we got to figure this out. <laughs> just, just pumping money into this thing. Just <laughs> believe me, they're still they still haven't broke even. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. they decide the thing that made them the most popular that they were gonna just take the alcohol out of that thing right <laughs> get rid of that that's the part slow it just down. in case you were craving white claw but didn't want the alcohol yeah like you're driving to work like i don't know like you <laughs> just you need it so bad like <laughs> when oh, am i gonna drink th this Here's the thing that's really great. So I'm reading about White Claw, right? Keep in mind, this is a company that has done decades of research and development to learn mm -hmm. how to make this simple proprietary White Claw thing that's totally unique and unlike anything else on the market. In fact, they very specifically said it's the first in the world like it. White Claw was created by Mark Anthony Group which is run by a gentleman from Vancouver named Anthony Von Mandel and is also known for producing Mike's Hard Lemonade. So, <laughs> which was out <laughs> when we were in college. We, we knew about Mike's. <laughs> yeah. So this idea, it's like we created something with White Claw. That's the first thing in the world. And we had to use all this proprietary, <laughs> proprietary to who? You right. got it from Mike's Hard Lemonade. <laughs> this wasn't new to you. <laughs> I uh, you just you're still like what who was your core audience on this? Like people like I like people are like man I really would like a white claw but I don't drink alcohol. Right. Then like, why would you want a white claw? Why would you want a white claw? Like I don't know who this who like who who was buying this? I don't I don't know. <laughs> Like you well, want the white, if because even if you're like, all right, because you see everyone's doing this now. Like yeah. um, Guinness is doing this, like, and like I get it because it tastes like beer. Yes, but White Claw without alcohol is something that's been around for a long time. It's yes. just flavored seltzer water. So yeah. not I'm hard. so confused who this who this appeals to. Yeah, it's not but, hard. But, it's not expensive. Like Here's I, what I'm honestly, thinking. Oh, go ahead. No, I was, honestly, I don't know who is, like, drinking non-alcoholic any beer, to be perfectly honest. Right. I don't, what is the point at that, right. at that point? Like, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't really even get the point, but I especially get it less with seltzer water with well, alcohol in it. Yeah, the other thing, too, is, you know, White Claw, one of the things they touted was that they created flavors. 
that have never been seen before. That was a mm-hmm. huge part of it, right? So when you look up the White Claw seltzer flavors, they are black cherry, mango, oh, watermelon, okay, lime, grapefruit, raspberry, lemon, tangerine, strawberry, blackberry, pineapple, passion fruit, peach. Which one of those is the flavor you've never heard of before? They have never, that's never been a thing before. Peach? I don't, yeah. <laughs> peach? What's that? What's that yeah. taste like? I mean, that they like legitimately say that they have found a way to create flavors that have never, ever been seen before. And those are the ones that they have. So maybe they've created those flavors. They just never released those flavors. <laughs> They created like <laughs> Vienna sausage flavor, but <laughs> but they're like no one's ever gonna. Do it. We've created oh, no. it, but we, we're, we're just created. waiting for the right time to bring this one out. Because <laughs> it says our new to the world approach led us to develop our own iconic flavors found in no other drinks. Like if you could maybe say like alcoholic drinks, but they're not right. even touting it as <laughs> drinks at they're all. They're saying drinks, period. Like in liquid nobody's form. Ever. <laughs> in liquid form. Pineapple sure. has never been consumed in liquid form before. No, no. I mean, you eat pineapple. I get it, but I've never drank it. <laughs> drink it. Drank a pineapple? <laughs> That's crazy. How would you even juice it? It doesn't make I don't any even sense. Know. <laughs> could you even juice it? I don't know. <laughs> It's a pretty solid matter when I eat pineapple. Yeah. I got to cut it with be, a knife, you know? It's going to be a new thing for our show is, can you juice it? <laughs> <laughs> Just going to try to juice different things and see what happens. I'm not starting with a pineapple, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Wait, that's the finale. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. It's so strange. Yeah, Ugh. I mean, I do feel like maybe there's a little tiny bit of, uh, I don't know, uh, exaggeration. In uh, in White Claw's uh, PR and uh, and marketing sure. uh, around this it's stuff, it's marketing. So, yeah, everyone always. <laughs> yeah, we have to be honest. Yeah, have you ever had black cherry before? I bet you haven't. <laughs> yeah, you know no. what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so White Claw has fully just White Claw non-alcoholic. It's fifteen calories. Again. I'm sure there are zero calorie. I was going to say, what's in a well? seltzer water? Yeah. 10? Like maybe. Like, I don't, and I'm pretty sure it's just because they have to put that on the label in case you decide to eat the plastic. Like you got to account for the calories somehow. Like, <laughs> it's just, just it's well, White like Claw has like... proprietary technology that makes their stuff taste like <laughs> seltzer water. And so that comes with 15 calories. Sure. Sure. It's not just, just yeah. Watch out seltzer water company. Yeah, it doesn't just jump in the can. You got to actually like, yeah, you got to do something to it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I have a black cherry uh, seltzer water upstairs right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just, just not setting. unique. They can be found in the wild. <laughs> <laughs> this is weird, man. I I want to see who. I I just want to see the person buying it and really just. Like, maybe that's what we do. We do, like, an on-assignment type of a thing where I just go around interviewing people. That'd be great. Buying White Claw Zero and and find out, why are you buying this? Well, I'll tell you why White Claw claims they're buying it. White Claw 0% alcohol, this is according to them, arrives at a time when consumer drinking culture, once synonymous with drinking alcohol, has fundamentally changed. A new survey from White Claw found that the majority (laughs) of people... Oh, it doesn't say that. I swear to God. Yes, the Claw is referencing their own survey. <laughs> A new survey from White Claw found that the majority of people who drink alcohol, which is 69% of people, mm-hmm. Gen Z, 81%, and Millennials, 78%, are interested in exploring a sober, curious, or damp lifestyle. However, 63% of consumers say feelings of expectations and pressure from others, along with the fear of being judged, are making it challenging for them to avoid drinking alcohol during drinking occasions. It's a gap for consumers that no one has addressed until now. Because why would you address it? I don't under... <laughs> yeah, like, just, so, how could we so address listen. peer pressure? <laughs> so listen, I'm go- I'm, I, I don't want to drink... But I, but I'm being bullied or picked on to drink. 
But if I show up with a non-alcoholic white claw, people are like, hey, dude, you're cool, man. You're the coolest. What? Let's party in your house, bro. <laughs> well, here's, I get it. Okay, I'm going to say this. I get it slightly, right? Like, liquid death, right? When that came out, the water came out. Like, they had it in a cool looking can. It looks like a beer can. So it's like, okay, whatever. If that, if that was a big thing. However, that means it's already been created. So there, there is someone that is taking care of this. It's just not seltzer water. It doesn't Good. need to be seltzer water. Regular yeah. water will also do the job. Liquid death is already in the marketplace. I don't understand. Huh. But here's the thing. My guess is it's marketing or product development at White Claw. And these guys are like, we got to come up with something else. Jeez, because these, <laughs> and so they, let's put our own survey together. We're going to do a poll. And then we will find people that say that they wish they had something to drink that didn't yeah. have alcohol in it, but still had a, the name White Claw. Just and then so... we'll show it to the bosses and they'll tell yeah. us to create yeah. something new. So I show up to your house and you're like, hey, man, do you want some of this uh, really good bourbon? And I really don't want bourbon, right? but I don't want to be ostracized. So I yes. say, no, it's cool, dude. I have a White Claw. I have a White Claw. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be nursing this White Claw for the <laughs> evening. And it's okay if I run out. I brought a whole case with me. I stopped by and picked it up. 20 bucks at Walmart. <laughs> I just, like the peer pressure of it, just, it just, that's hilarious because you're showing up to party. Everyone's drinking, you know, Miller Lights and, yeah. you know, this and that. And you'd be like, nah, it's cool, dude. I'm drinking a White Claw. Yeah. And then you like, won't have any pressure at all. On you. Right. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> People are like, dang, is that a White Claw? Sure it is. Wink. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the commercial. And then that the person show. immediately gets jumped by everyone and beat yeah. up. Yeah. That's how it ends. <laughs> this is great. Wow, we spent a long time on this one. But but I just love the research done by White Claw. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy that they are now, like, and you know they probably, like, they, they invoiced that. It was like a $1.8 million survey done by White Claw to just this I mean, it's crazy and what they don't tell you though is white claws numbers since 2020 and white claw has had a dramatic drop in sales so that is a big part of this as well because they are now trying to find a different product and some other way to prop it up and uh yeah it, it hasn't been great because I'm trying to find here where we had it because I just had it up a second ago and I don't want to, I don't want to wait too long. But uh, yeah, because there are so many now uh, that are happening and you have all these new ones, you know, coming up. Uh, White Claw used to have, I think, sixty percent of the market, and then 2023, I think they have like eighteen percent of the market. Wow, just that quick. I mean, it makes sense though. I mean, you saw like. Bud Light came out with theirs. That's right. And, you know, you've got, um, geez, I don't, I don't even know. You just name the list. Uh, just, just go down the list. Oh, everybody Orchard, truly, all, truly. Yeah. Um, there's one I'm thinking of, and I can't. Uh, well, uh, I can tell you who the major players are. White Claw has 18 percent of the market. Michelob has seven percent. Smirnoff has seven percent. Truly has seven percent. Twisted Tea has five percent. Bud Light Seltzer, 5%, and something called Lemon Life with 2%. Dang, that's like really uh, tight. That's a tight competition there in the, it uh, is. the seltzer category. That's right. Yeah, so there you go. So now hmm. you know everything you need to know and a little bit more. Probably little bit more, more than, than you, you wanted to know. To know. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> about that. Yeah. <laughs> that, that one's on us. We're going to take, take the hit on that one. The little, I did not plan for this to be a seltzer centric uh, episode, but you know, hey. you know, it's it happened organically. Yeah, you, <laughs> you belly up to the table, you play the cards you dealt, right? And this is if you're listening, that's what you got dealt tonight. Listen, However, we we can move on. <laughs> we we can just know that we hit a we hit hot topic buttons. You know the hot <laughs> the old hot buttons. You know, <laughs> when they come up, <laughs> we're right. there. Yeah. We're first on the scene and you know, this is, this is, let's face Last it. Last to leave too, but you know. <laughs> That's right. 
Like every good party goer, show up a little early, stay way too long. <laughs> like Michael Scott showing up three hours early with potato salad. And sitting in the dash all day. I don't think I would get that. <laughs> all right, so here's the thing. I'm going to move on, and I'm going to show you something that is not an issue if you're in America. But we do have listeners and, and subscribers and followers of our show in the great, great nation of Australia. And I'm going to describe, uh, you've been skydiving. We talked about this previously. Yeah. Uh, I have been skydiving, so we've done the skydiving thing before, and we've both done skydiving in America. And in America, it goes kind of as you envision it going. You go up in the plane, you jump out of the plane, you land on the ground, sure. done, right? You, yeah. you, you, whatever, maybe take some pictures, you go home. In Australia, skydiving is very different. Uh, skydiving in Australia has its own challenges, and I'm going to show you a video and explain what some of these challenges are. Uh, here's a gentleman who is coming down. I have it muted, but he is coming down from his skydiving. Mm -hmm. And uh, landing in a really nice kind of country setting here. He's got a platform here that he's going to uh, kind of spin and spin land onto. On. Very, very nice. Perfect good landing, technique. right? Perfect landing. Where everything seems to be doing well. Yeah. Now look at this. Oh, what kangaroo was that? rushes him, and kangaroos start coming at him and kicking him. He's fighting off kangaroos. <laughs> this is what it's like in Australia. This is yeah. every day in Australia. Anything you do, you got to fight kangaroos. Yeah, that's it. He just comes down for a landing, and out of the blue, kangaroos yeah. rush him and start kicking him. Not not just running by him, running right at him, like to tackle him and trying to no, kick him. It was him. ready to fight. It was yes. ready to fight. What is this bird like creature coming into <laughs> yes. my area? Right at him. And now he's yeah. trying to fight him off. <laughs> Being attacked. <laughs> Those those are not problems that you have in America. <laughs> they don't usually see that. No. <laughs> that is so unique. I mean, so imagine you've really got to be ready for anything. You yeah. you come down, you're like, wow, I survived my skydive only to get killed by a kangaroo kick to the yeah. head. Yeah. Like, you gotta really be careful. You know, when when that when you sent that video and you know, I hadn't seen it and I was like, Oh, you know, I don't know, is there gonna be like scorpions down there? Like is he gonna yes. land on like snakes? No, it's just a kangaroo running full speed at him. Yes. Two of them come at the guy, and he's, like, trying to fight him off. One's trying to kick him and just keeps chasing him. Are they trying to rob him? Like, <laughs> <laughs> It's a weird world, man. It is a weird, weird world that we live in. They did not care. So it's it's arguable that in uh, in, in Australia, landing after skydiving is just as dangerous as the <laughs> skydiving itself. Skydiving. You survived the fall, yeah. but that doesn't, yeah. you're only halfway done. Yeah. 10 people die a year in Australia skydiving, 24 die a year landing. <laughs> <laughs> Kangaroo's just waiting for him down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Come, come on down, buddy. Yeah. Well, you, yeah. You're going to get down here eventually. We can be patient. <laughs> we don't we even know what time up. is. We're kangaroos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so anyway there's that uh then i saw this thing the other day i thought was kind of a, a really crazy story so a guy uploaded a video five years ago and he entitled this being ugly my experience a random girl commented on that video saying he was cute you can only imagine where this ends up going because there's only one way that a story like this could possibly go. They end up getting married. <laughs> so this guy puts out a video being ugly. My experience also Which for the record, 20, 20 million, million views. views. So then this girl comments, I think you're kind of cute to be honest. I mean it. They meet, they get married. <laughs> that's the old true love story there yeah i mean good for you buddy and also just tells people take your shot right you don't know what's gonna happen this guy literally thought he was so ugly he needed to film it for posterity <laughs> just so you know i'm yeah. not lying 
I could have written this as a blog, but I want I want video <laughs> proof. I want visual evidence of how ugly I am. Not to everybody. There's somebody for everybody. Uh, We've really said it before is. on the show. You know, There's and that, that, that it really is. And like you're out there, you're struggling. Hang in there, man. There's yeah. someone meant for you. Yes. But try putting up a video. <clears throat> yeah. Just... Talking about how ugly you are. Just a self-deprecating video, just, you know. Dude got I mean, maybe 20 don't. million views. He's probably yeah. a millionaire <laughs> from from YouTube <laughs> making all the money from having 20 million views of his yeah. video. Just by showing how ugly he is. Yeah. yeah, got a wife out of it. And then he gets a wife out of it on top of it. Yeah, not bad. Win-win. Yeah. Yeah, not bad. Good for you, sir. Yeah. Good for you, sir. Being ugly, my experience, your experience sounds... Pretty, pretty positive. Like you've <laughs> yeah. had an excellent, an excellent experience being ugly. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to swing way in the other direction here. I saw this story uh, recently in the news. This is a bizarre story. This is from Fox in Houston uh, that has it, but it happened in Mississippi. 215 bodies are found in Jackson, Mississippi. So an alarming situation has unfolded in Jackson, Mississippi, where 215 bodies were discovered buried in unmarked graves behind a state jail. Families of the deceased were left in the dark until last month. Some grave sites were only identified by a number and a metal rod, raising concerns about the lack of transparency and respect in handling the deceased. Yeah, obviously. Hmm. The families of the deceased attorneys are calling for a thorough investigation into the circumstances surrounding these unmarked graves. So essentially what happened is it started with this uh, gentleman named Dexter Wade. He died in March of 2023 and his family was never informed of his death. He got buried without their knowledge. And so then they started uh, kind of looking into it and apparently he had ID on him. The identification was given to the lead detective by the medical examiner. The detective claimed to have called the family without receiving an answer and didn't take any more action. I guess just like forgot to notify the family about the guy having died. And so now they've found all these unmarked graves and hundreds of bodies. Apparently buzzards were flying around because these are shallow graves without embalming. They didn't even embalm the bodies. It's so bizarre. And it's it's hard to even imagine such a horrific scenario. I mean, look, obviously we talk about tons of funny stuff on the show. There's nothing funny. There are no jokes that are going to be made about this situation. Right. But if you look it up, I mean, it is an incredibly strange story. But it appears that certain people, when they died, if they didn't... You know, maybe they didn't have close ties to family. Maybe people weren't investigated too closely. And, I mean, they didn't embalm them. They didn't do anything. They just dug shallow holes and buried them out back. How is there not protocol for any of this stuff? I mean, jeez. Yeah. I mean, you saw this, like, even in, uh, you know, we talked about Red uh, and Shawshank. Even right. them, they had boxes they put them in. Yeah. And, and and buried them. Like, these people weren't embalmed. They were put in shallow graves and how did they think they were going to get away with this forever? Like, I, I just, it's, it's the wildest thing, man. Like, it, it's just like, it, it seems like something you would see like in like the 1950s or something, Yeah, you know, and I don't know how long those bodies had been there, but I mean, yeah. you know, just unmarked graves, just bare, I mean, look, they're in jail. They're not saints, but they also probably deserve to have some sort of, you know, human right there i mean you know say what you want i i you know i'm sure people are going to be like well you know what they do and you know they deserve the sure. same fate that's fine but for the families like you right. know they probably deserve um to uh, minimally at least know a voicemail hey yeah. uh this is you know so and so yeah uh your loved one's no longer with us yeah well, it's crazy too because you know like just for anyone who, because look, let's face it, right? We live in the world we live in. People hear a story like this and it involves jail. Then they hear Mississippi and they're automatically going to say, oh, well, this is a racial thing. They're all black people. Let me jump in 
and correct you before that happens. Uh, the issues extend beyond race. Everyone that has investigated this says both white and black individuals are buried in the same manner. And so there's no sort of different treatment based on race or anything else. This is just how they were handling these situations with these folks. So this is not a racial thing. Forget about the fact that it's in Mississippi or it wouldn't matter where it was. It's just wrong to treat people like this under any circumstances. Yeah. And the idea that there are 215 of them out there buried, yeah, it, it just doesn't even seem possible. Like it's not 10, like even 10, you'd be like shocked. Like this is like, this is probably as big as your jail is, you know? You yes. Can, hey, like every single person that's died, you've just thrown out there right. for the vultures uh, to yeah. get. And again, it doesn't matter what they did. I, I like, I, yeah. I, I don't, I don't really not care. At all. Like that's what makes us, I won't say better. Better is probably not the right word, but that's, that's what makes us human. That's what makes us better than the person that committed those crimes is by doing things the proper way. Like that's just what you do. Like it's, yeah. it, it, it's insane to me that, that, that I just don't understand like where they thought they were going to get away with this. Like at some no. point, no one's calling the jail and, or the, <laughs> you know, the prison and being like, Hey, I haven't heard from, you know, my right. uncle in, you know, two years, what's going on, you know, like yeah, that, some I, of the family members say they just, they still thought <clears throat> their family members were missing. Like they just didn't know. So I don't know if these were all necessarily prisoners. Like they're still, cause they don't even know who all's buried back there. Wow. So we don't know for sure if they were all inmates at the jail or if just the jails where they were burying people. Like we don't really know. There's a lot we don't know yet. So it's, um, it's pretty crazy. It's it, it, it was behind the state jail, but we don't really know specifically. I mean, you would assume the vast majority of them would have been prisoners. Right. But there were a lot of family members who say, well, we thought he was missing. Like, they didn't even know he was in jail. So, wow. uh, so it makes you wonder, like, were they ever, were some of them in jail or were they not? And they just used that area to be able to put the bodies. Like, can't find a, a, the next of kin and right. just throw them out there. Yeah. And a shot like, like you... <laughs> He couldn't even dig it deep enough. You couldn't yeah. embalm, like you couldn't take the time to embalm them. You couldn't do anything. Like they're just yeah. out there rotten and buzzards and everything else flying around. Wild animals. It's crazy. Probably digging one or two up. I can't imagine. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gross, man. Like, just what a scene. And who's who, like who's agreeing to do this? Is, right. Are you just getting other prisoners to do it? Like, I don't. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, that's a story we'll have to keep uh, keep up on because I'd love to know the details and what happens from there. Because yeah, uh, yeah this is I'd imagine it's going to open up quite a big investigation. Sure, hope, hope so. so anyways. Yeah. yeah, really hope so. I mean, a lot of bad things should happen to a lot of bad people for something like this happening because there's yeah. just not a not a place for that in the world. That's hmm. that's for sure. So scary stuff, man. Uh, so moving on. Speaking of crime and punishment. Um, in 2000, a notorious child serial killer from Pakistan named Javed Iqbal was sentenced. And the sentencing here, now you want to stop crime? You want to really crack down on criminals? Listen to the sentence that this gentleman, I can't say gentleman, right? He was a scumbag. He was a child serial killer. But listen to the sentence that he was given. He was sentenced to be strangled to death with an iron chain. Then his corpse to be cut up into 100 small pieces and his body dissolved in acid in front of the parents of his victims. However, the interior minister Munadin Hadir later decided against this and uh, Iqbal died by suicide before any sentence could be carried out. <laughs> They do not mess around with crime in some of these foreign countries. And this is, I mean, the, the gentleman's in Pakistan. Good Lord, man. Don't like, don't be committing any crime in Pakistan. I mean, strangled by a chain seems bad enough, but then you have to yeah. be cut up into a hundred pieces. And then those hundred pieces have to be burned in acid. I mean, come on, man. In front of the victim's families. Do they, <laughs> do they want that? I don't. Well, like, who's requesting that? Forcing them to? <laughs> They're like, there's only one way I can get closure. <laughs> I need to see his body dissolved in acid. Yeah. Well, no thanks. Piece by piece. Oh my god. So strange, man. Jeez. 
Scary stuff. Scary stuff. But hey, look, let's face it. You can't, like, we talk on this show all the time about how you can't ha- allow crime and not punish it. Now, I'm not saying you need to go all the way to this end of the spectrum. <laughs> yeah. But the point is, there is a wide, wide spectrum. Yeah, I and, won't even say happy medium because we, right. you know, even the medium is probably still too much. <laughs> yeah, the medium is like a firing squad or something. <laughs> right. but like, but definitely, there's a lot of room to uh, de incentivize criminal behavior, and you don't do that by you know allowing them to rob stores and then just not pressing charges against them, not pursuing anything, not caring about it. You don't have to cut their hands off. You don't have to melt them in acid or some crazy stuff. But man, like other places, say what you want. I'm guessing Pakistan has a relatively low crime rate. I'm not advocating that we go to that type of system, but I'm just sure. saying I'm pretty I'm pretty confident they have a they've put a lid on on crime there. Yeah, I'm guessing Walgreens isn't closing its stores because <laughs> of uh, too much theft there. That's right. They don't have that problem. Yeah, they definitely don't have that problem. Uh, and then moving on, I saw this the other day. So this uh, this is kind of what I have to envision would be the nightmare. Okay, so let me describe this. There's uh, you've done, seen parasailing, right? Like the, you know, parasailing. You're at the beach. You always see them out there. They're getting pulled behind a boat. They have like the big parachute thing. They're kind of just hanging in the air, but they're tethered, you know. Uh, and I've never done this. I don't know if you've ever done it. Have you ever parasailed? No, n- n- not even like. Uh, there's zero desire to do something yeah. like that. I've never done it, don't want to do it, but this is what can happen when you're parasailing and a storm is coming in. Because here's this person, and you see, I mean, this is, it's it's dark rain, heavy clouds. It's so windy that they the, the, the pulley isn't strong enough to get them pulled back into the boat. They're just stranded. And so they can't get this person in. The winds are increasing from this storm. They're trying to bring in other people to figure out how do we get this person reeled back in. And then the rope snaps, the tether snaps. And this guy is now just like free flying over the hotel. Oh my gosh. And with thunderstorms coming in, there's nothing that they can do. And that dude's just gone. Just sailing away. Yeah. Now, eventually... I did. There was a follow-up video that they did find him, <laughs> and I think he was okay. Uh, but yes, that is like, can you imagine? No, and it's not the first one that's happened. Like there was another one where that happened. Um, it was two girls, and they smashed into the side of a building. I'm pretty sure they died. Another one that she got um, cut loose. And I, I'm pretty sure, like, she just smashed every bone in her face up. She survived, but I, I don't, I don't really don't get the appeal of it. Oof. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure what the appeal is. And these no. people out there, and a lot of times you're doing these in like, uh, not all of them, but a lot of them you're doing in like countries that probably don't have the strictest safety th- safety standards that we yeah. do. Very true. And so you're out there on vacation, like, hey, and who? You don't know the last time anyone's checked those ropes. Apparently, they don't know how to check weather forecasts because it's not like a storm <laughs> just pops up out of nowhere. Right. <laughs> like, it's not like one second it's nice and the next second, uh, you know, there's clouds everywhere. Like, yeah, yeah you get some form of notification. <laughs> At least have a couple of minutes to be able to figure out like how to how to get this solved. Yeah, you can pull up the Weather Channel app and at least see if there's a storm heading in your way. Yeah. I mean, there's something, and they're just leaving her hang out there or him out there. And yeah. no, that's oh, oh, I couldn't imagine. And what do you do? You're the guy that's just. I mean, there's nothing you can do, right? No. But you're just floating out in the ocean in this big thing. <laughs> like, yeah. What are you thinking? Like, you have to be thinking. This is how I die. Yeah, this is it. This is the end for me. Like, you know, there's my hotel. I just went over that. Like, here I go. Like, because you don't know when or where you're going to land. You could land in the middle of the highway. Yeah. You could, you know, like anything could happen. You're not controlling that thing. Like, yeah, it's not like you have the controls that you can steer it or anything. Like, you're just up there. Yeah. (laughs) You're just strapped in. You're just along for the ride at this point. Yeah. I mean, and what if it goes the other way? What if it takes you out to sea? (laughs) Takes you way out 
You're a hundred miles out in the ocean. I mean, you, you could know? easily be floating yeah. that far out with that kind of a wind. I mean, geez. absolutely. You'd be just. Oh, we should write a movie about that. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody take that idea. Uh, no trademark, copyright. Trademark. Yeah, it's copyright yep. pending on yep. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We said it. We said it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, so similar to that, uh, I've never been to the uh, the country of Colombia. Here it's beautiful. South America. Mm-hmm. Uh, people really like it there. Of course, it doesn't always have the best reputation. No. Good the drum coffee. trade. Yeah, good coffee. There you go. So yeah. there's mm-hmm. there's ups and downs, right? Good coffee, huh. but the drug trade has has certainly given it a a, a bit of a bad reputation uh, over the years. That's understandable. So this person was out hiking in Colombia, and this is one of those things where there's only so many different ways that that this could have ever been needed to be done. This plane landing. He's out. He's out here, and here comes a plane right overhead. And look at the runway. This is in the middle of a jungle and there's a tiny dirt runway right over the edge of a mountain. And this thing, I mean, what is that? Is it a hundred feet long? Uh, it can't be much more than that. I mean, and, and just wide, it's not even as wide as the plane. Yeah. Like, you know, as far as the wings are concerned. No, this thing, this plane comes over the trees. It looks like it's a plane crash. Like it's kind of like coming in sideways. It looks like it's, it's going to crash. But then you realize, like, no, it's actually just, like, sliding in sideways to drop down in between these trees in the jungle and land on this dirt airstrip. Pretty now impressive my hiking, pilot. My hiking at that point becomes full-out sprinting. <laughs> yes, because exactly. I'm just presuming <laughs> yeah. that is not They're a good not sign. They're not here for coffee. They're not here for coffee. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Folgers didn't need a, an emergency... Uh... <laughs> Cacao beans, you know. Yeah. They didn't. They didn't they doing just their fine. coffee beans uh, quickly. Um, yeah. No. Yeah. That's 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 something else here. So. Yeah. Let yeah. me get on up out of here. I'm in the wrong place. Yeah. At the just, wrong I, time. Geez. But yeah, I, I mean, it's just incredible that, like, first of all, the dudes are that talented too. Like that they can fly that little tiny oh, little impressive. Cessna yeah. plane, probably from the seventies. I mean, they're just like scraping the tops of the trees, drop it right down, get onto a dirt path. And of course, yeah, how can we stop them, right? These are the people that we're trying to stop. Uh, also, by the way, everyone, the southern border is wide open. They don't need to be able to do this stuff, right? They could literally right. walk across right now and we'd be fine. Yeah. But they uh, they have this type of talent uh, with, with lesser stuff. It's it's crazy. Yes, it, it the talent that goes into that. Maybe they should uh, be trying to fly for Alaska Air instead of yeah. um, some of the people they got flying for them now. No kidding. No kidding. Uh, and, you know, I saw the other day that they had, uh, you know, we all use like the hand dryers, right? If you're out of the uh, anywhere, Not store, it. restaurant, anything else, you know, like the, sometimes a lot of places don't even have like the towels no. anymore. You know, you have to use the, they blow the hot air on your hands. And so, so many places have gone to that because then they don't have to pay the money for uh for stocking paper towels but question is if you use these hand dryers how well do they actually kill germs so they did a so study we're on this to hand air Shoot. dryer sorry i thought that was uh, muted so the the question is that how germy is it so what they essentially did was take these petri dishes and they started using them like holding them out openly in the the just open air in the middle of the bathroom and then they would put it under, you know, the hand dryers and everything to be able to test what was going on. I don't know why it's freezing up. I might not be able to. Uh, there it is. So then they blow it under different types of hand dryers. You know, and we've all used the different ones. And so they, they put them in all different hand dryers and then just the regular air that's in the uh, in the bathroom. And then you can see like, OK, well, no, no, no real issues there. How about the oh, wait a minute. Look at that. Look at the germs that are coming out of these hand dryers. So these Petri dishes are just lit up with all kinds of fungus and, and horrible things in these, uh, in these different hand dryers. Dyson looks like it does the best out of those. Uh, well, no, I mean, I guess that one did, but yeah. Can you imagine? And just, you know, so they're essentially saying air dry your hands. Yeah. 
That, and don't and I bother do. using any sort of any sort of towels if they if they're there outside sure. of that. Just air dry your hands. Don't use these hand dryers. They're they're yeah. dirtier than the open air is. I mean, think about that. Someone takes a dump, wipes, puts their hands under there under the you know the sink. Two seconds. What? It, clearly, they didn't get all the feces off of their <laughs> hands, and they're putting them in that air dryer things, and they're just swirling around it absolutely disgusting i mean it, you, like humans are just disgusting by nature sure and what makes you think the walmart bathroom the people are washing their hands for the 30 seconds that uh, right. the cdc <laughs> requires if they're washing their hands at all they're probably drying their hands from getting piss all over their hands <laughs> so they're using the hand dryers right. i mean uh that, when i see it i'm like nope just dry your hands and i'll tell my you know my eight-year-old i'm like but just just wipe them on your pants because it's going to be just <laughs> as clean. I mean, it's it's crazy because you know it was always, and that's how they build it. Like, oh, this is safer, healthier. Right. And now they try to put the blue lights on there. Like, yes, have you yes, seen the yes, hand dryers? Yes. Like, oh, well, that's magic. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The UV light will do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That'll that'll do it. Yeah. It, it's uh, so gross, and they actually put them back. Uh, in a lot of places are actually putting them back because. Yeah. They Putting, realize you mean the hand, the towels, the hand the towels, towels back yeah. in, yeah. yeah, because they realize how much more cleaner it actually is because you're actually wiping the germs away. Yeah, <laughs> it just oh, so gross, terrible, and it's indisputable because now I mean this is like a medical professional, gloves, petri dishes, doing the whole thing, and man, I mean they're all lit up. Man, there's all kinds of spores oh. growing, and that's just from the air being blown onto it. Well, and just think about the air being blown around too. So those, that, oh, just the germs, the the yeah. spores, everything else. Now you put that hair dry, hand dryer down, you know, and it's got to come out like you know, uh, like a seven forty seven, right. you know, Boeing jet, <laughs> yeah. and you know, just all that blowing around in the airs in the bathroom. Oh man, that's so gross. I'm not yeah. a germaphobe by any stretch. But I know my limits, and yeah. uh, I, I'd stop them at the hand dryers. <laughs> Well, that's a fair place to stop. Yeah. All right. Well, we've reached the end of the show, so that means we have one story left, and it's the one that we started with to begin the show. I'm not even going to say it's a story. It's not a story. It's not a story. It's not a story. <laughs> it's, it's a quick story. Uh. It's, it's, a, it's a nightmare scenario. There is a video associated with this. I will try to explain it. I don't even want to explain it to people. I feel like this is definitely, this is one, if you're listening on the podcast, please go check out the YouTube page. <laughs> please, if you're listening on the podcast, take your phone, throw it out your window. Do not go look this up. Don't do it. But we have, uh, you know, there's this rise now of amateur backyard wrestling, stuff like that, amateur wrestling things. And so they have what appears to be a setup outside, like a little makeshift ring, um, and, you know, they're, these guys, look, they're not professionals, right? But they're trying to, like, hype it up and have fun. And they're hanging with their friends and everybody's around. And, you know, if you watch the wrestling, you know, the guys climb up on the top rope and they're, like, getting the getting the crowd sure. into it and, you know, kind of doing their little poses and stuff like that. And so, you know, that's what these guys want to do, right? They're trying to put on the show. And they're, they're putting on the same type of show. And they're, this is quite a show. This is a show. You got your money's worth on this show. You got your money's worth. So here it is. They are uh, hanging. One guy has already had his intro. Another guy is coming into the ring. He's getting introduced. He climbs up. He's on the second rope. He's pumped up. He jumps down. Oh, my God. He jumped. Oh, God. He jumps down. And both of his knees apparently shatter and his legs bend backwards. Oh, what? He hits his head. The back of his head. Yes. Oh, his legs the go man. the opposite way that they're oh, supposed to. Gosh. And he, sm he slams down on it, like his head. I mean, this is... And he's like three and a half feet off the ground. I, There's no could reason he, that this happened. This shouldn't have happened. <laughs> like, this is no <laughs> excuse. It's, it doesn't this make is, sense that this occurs. This is, this is like jumping off of like your your like mini deep freezer. Like yeah, it just this it shouldn't like if happen. You were, if you were on the fourth step, maybe of a flight of stairs, and then you jump down, how? Just, 
would both of your legs break and you bend backwards the wrong way? It's it's the worst conceivable nightmare. It, this is like, you know, when we were growing up, you know, you'd watch like uh, Steven Seagal movies like, you know, like sure. Hard to Kill and stuff, right? Uh-huh, and the move uh-huh. was always like a guy would try to punch Seagal. Seagal would step over to the side, take his his arm and break it over his shoulder, right? Uh-huh. Classic Seagal yeah. move. Sure. Uh, this is that, this is that <laughs> with Except both legs the... simultaneously. And the mat was Steven Seagal. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, that guy was the random thug in the bar, the and the uh-huh. and the mat, the the, the 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 mat there for the wrestling match was uh, uh-huh. playing the role of Steven Seagal in this in this in this script. I mean, he just does like a a, a turn, like he just like he's facing this way towards yeah. the crowd, and then just does a spin back facing i guess his opponent <laughs> yeah, this is just, not an athletic maneuver it's not, like just a little hop down it's like there's it's, no i i there had to be some pretty con, pre-existing conditions there yeah I mean, like I osteoporosis to... this dude had to have brittle bones this guy has I like just, bird bones i like it's simply <laughs> has hollow bones like, like i just refuse to like if i didn't see the gofundme for this poor guy's page I would have thought it was staged because wait, there's a GoFundMe. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I didn't even know that. So it's not funny. I, like no, I, I'm just laughing. It's not funny. It's not, it's not funny, not funny. At all. I think I'm just laughing at the just the sheer ridiculous of how you got like this would be me. Like like we talk <laughs> about all the time. Like this is how I would get injured. Like jumping off my couch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I mean, it doesn't yeah. seem possible. So apparently, it is um, like the dude almost lost his legs because of this oh, incident. God. Like this is just absolutely horrible. So if you look in the um, the thing I had sent you uh, from the uh, the Sun UK, if you scroll down, mm. there is uh, um, there is a a GoFundMe link in there. Uh, and it's still active. Uh, the last I checked, which was today, um, they were trying to raise two hundred thousand dollars, and they've raised twenty three thousand eight hundred and seven of that so far. So, mm-hmm. if you are um, listening and you feel so inclined to uh, help the guy out, um, go to medical expenses for Justin's broken legs. <laughs> so bad. Let, let me, I have it up here, so let me let me let me break down. Let me. This is I'm gonna read. <laughs> you, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna read his GoFundMe page. Let me mute this while you read. Yeah, you mute you mute it. I'm gonna read the GoFundMe page. This is the uh, so it's titled "Medical Expenses for Justin's Broken Legs." <laughs> I thought you were muted. I don't- I thought you were muting. <laughs> yes, that's the, t- that's the title. The title is Medical Expenses for Justin. <laughs> All right, I muted him. I muted you. I muted you. He'll be back when he's regained his consciousness. Uh, yes, so the title is Medical Expenses for Justin's Broken Legs. Uh, and they wrote, You or someone you know, an absolute free spirit, the life of the party, and ready for whatever? Well, that's our Justin. He was genuinely just having fun when both of his legs were severely broken. <laughs> Justin was invited to participate in a live amateur wrestling event this past weekend hosted by his good friends when the performance was abruptly stopped. During his entrance, Justin jumped and spun from the second rope of the ring when his feet hit the base of the structure, his knees bent backwards, and both of his legs snapped. Now, they say this exclamation point, like, both of his legs snapped. Snapped. I would have. They did. I would have. Uh, that was definitely an exclamation point moment. That warrants some punctuation. (laughs) I agree. 
Since his injuries, Justin has had three surgeries with rods and pins put in his left leg with an additional surgery scheduled this week. Physicians are working hard to determine if amputation will be necessary. He'll ultimately be faced with a long road to recovery, starting with a two-week minimum hospital stay. His son, fiance, family, and friends are asking for donations in support of his medical expenses as Justin does not have insurance. Oh my gosh. Yes, $200,000 seems incredibly steep. However, the hospital stay, numerous surgeries, medical equipment, the countless months of physical therapy ahead, and even handicapping his home will far exceed this request. Though the internet has been a mixed bag of concern and distasteful cruelty, Justin has remained lighthearted in his situation. I want to air more on the side of concern than distasteful cruelty, if we can. <laughs> Justin has remained lighthearted in his situation. However, no amount of money will cover the emotional damage he will continue to endure through the aftermath of this horrible accident, so any offerings would help. Justin has been through so much physically in the last few days on top of a recent custody battle and oh losing his father gosh. this past Christmas. He <laughs> will sincerely appreciate any contributions gosh. to alleviate this unfortunate financial burden. At a very minimum, we simply ask you to pray for Justin. Um, so uh, you are uninsured yes. and you're out doing amateur wrestling. I mean, come on, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, geez, come on, Justin. Dude. Come on, Justin. You can't do this. Like I think you've got better stuff to be doing with your time than and you got a fiance, you got a kid that yeah. you're apparently in custody battle over. So yeah. Oh my it gosh, is that is brutal. It's clip. Just it it is brutal. Like I could not imagine the pain and agony that this guy would have to be going through. From jumping I, off a thing. four foot somehow ring. you have watched it several times. Oh man. I, this I watched it one time when you sent it to me and I was like I might throw up and then I was like okay I'll put it on the show. I didn't want to watch it a second time just now for us to put it on the show. Like I don't want to see it. It's the worst thing that I can think of. It's just the it's it it is and I don't discredit the fact that it's the worst thing that I mean it it's the worst like non contact like low impact injury I think <laughs> anyone has ever suffered their in their entire life. Like he wasn't yes. like skiing off a mountain. He jumped off a four it's foot crazy. rope. It just doesn't make sense how this happened. Like your your one eighty spin into the air and now you've got metal rods going through your legs and everything else. Like it's just and then you were doing it all while not having any insurance yeah. or money to speak of. And yeah, uh, man. <clears throat> listen, it's if you're so out bad. there and you feel like donating, just uh, Google uh, or go to um, uh, GoFundMe. GoFundMe. Search. search. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Medical yes. expenses for Justin's broken legs. And uh, there you can... Uh, you can donate. <laughs> yes. And and look, I will say this. Two things. They got right to the point with the title. Uh, <laughs> they really, they didn't, they didn't mince any words. No, they really put it right out there. But I will say this also. They have raised almost $24,000 so far. That's pretty cool. I mean, 846 people have donated money so far. So no, this was three years ago, but. Oh, shoot. It was that. <laughs> I swear to God, I thought this was recent. I thought this was... <laughs> oh. Uh, well, things took a darker turn then. <laughs> I thought this was a recent thing. No, but uh. I'm sure our group out here can... Um, we'll, we'll link it. We'll link yeah, it. Yeah, we'll to, link uh... it. We'll, we're going to link it. We're gonna try to link this. I think it's still active, at least. At the very least, I mean, it's it still looks active. Like it. Yeah, I'm not sure when the last donation was made. Um, looks like well, within the last couple of months. I mean, uh, last two three months there have been donations yeah, made. So there are still ago. donations trickling. Yeah, two three months ago, ten dollars, thirty dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, still got a mountain to climb to get to two hundred thousand dollars. I'll say you know, that. Got about, be too many mountains. I'll be climbing anytime soon, but. <laughs> 
<laughs> needs to about almost 10 X his current, uh, yeah. current money raised, but, but we can yeah. get there. There we can get there. We can get there. One, one tiny, tiny, close to the ground step at a time. We can get yeah, there. Yeah, we're not going to make any big leaps anymore. <laughs> we'll, no. we'll do this little by little. Little, yeah. little teeny, tiny, little, little, little by little. So, yeah, that is a horrific story. And a uh, some I wish I'd never seen or been aware of. Um, but well, you're welcome. This is the world we live in now, and I've shared hey. it, so... You know what? We got to make people aware. So that's it. Spread, spread the word. Stay out of backyard wrestling. If you're on an athlete, just don't do it. No, no. not worth it. No. And if you and, are going to do it, just make sure you have insurance. And make sure insurance. It should be top of top of mind. You're really going to want that insurance. It's vital. <sighs> I'm glad that we can now officially move on from that story. And that is actually, as I said, the last story of the night, because that's what I wanted to close on. Uh, I wish I hadn't now so that I could have had a little palate cleanser at the end Mm -hmm. and uh, Mm -hmm. not uh, leave such a distasteful memory for people. But uh, you live and learn. And I I have learned something from this. I will not not be accepting any more things that you send me. (laughs) I will not be clicking any more links. Also (laughs) jumping off ropes of any kind. Yeah, not at all. Not at all. Uh, all right. I think that's pretty much everything, man. We have done our best to entertain America, nay, the world. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. Do you have any last things you want to uh, throw out there? No, we've said enough. All right. Uh, many would argue we've said far too much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I am one of those people. I am yeah. one of them. <laughs> yeah. You're probably um, right. But yeah, so listen, as always, we said in the beginning, you know, check us out, uh, all the different platforms, every one of our videos in the description has links to, you know, everything else, our podcast platforms, our YouTube, our X account, everything. So you have plenty of access to us, uh, reach out, let us know what you think. Um, you know, we're always interested. We even have our email address on our YouTube page. People can email us ideas, questions, you know, things they have, whatever the case may be. So we're happy to hear from you. And, um, yeah, we'll do our best to continue to keep you entertained. We appreciate you checking us out. Hope you stick with us. And uh, we'll look forward to talking with you soon. Have a good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. T minus 10. T T minus 10. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and lift off.